Hi everyone and good morning from the Liberty of the Seas cruise ship, a wonderful Royal Caribbean cruise ship. In this video here, we're gonna show you off everything this cruise ship has to offer, from the bars and the drinks to the food and the restaurants, all the activities and more. I go by the legend, jumped by my wonderful, wonderful girlfriend, Molly. I love cruise days. Yeah, this is really good. And we'd never been on this ship before. No, our first time. Starting off the tour here on the pool deck. Very nice pool deck, I think. It is. You know, two really good sized pools, mm -hmm. giant hot tubs. I love how two are covered and then one's not covered. Yeah. But this one would be great to watch the movies. Yes, and they do movies up here on their Jumbotron. Uh, and also we're on the one floor above the pool and look at some of these chairs. Like they look really, really comfortable. Yes. Um, there are two different pool bars. You have the sky bar up here, which is currently closed because we are on a port day. And down there, you can see they open up a spur bar as well to help with the crowds, which is interesting. And then, uh, yeah, they'll do uh, deck parties up here. They'll do sail away party. They'll do some games. They have musical chairs, pool volleyball, and then the hunt, which is kind of like a scavenger hunt for adults. Yeah, and they'll do uh, movies in the evening, which I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. All right, that is the pool deck. Let's go check out the rest of the ship. I love the area on the very back of the ship. It's kind of the water park on the Liberty of the Seas. This is where you find the water slides. These two are body slides that are very, very gentle. You'll also find the Flowrider Surf Simulator out here. Sometimes it'll be boogie boarding, sometimes it'll be stand-up surfing. And then my favorite part, they've also got this slide here, known as the Tidal Wave. And it's one of the best water slides I've been on on a cruise ship. It is so much fun. Big steep drop going up the wave wall. Uh, awesome, awesome section here in the back of the ship. On deck 13 in the back of the ship, you'll find the sports court area, home to the big giant rock wall, as well as a full court basketball court. And they'll use this quite a bit. There's all sorts of activities out here, whether like uh, there's, later today there's a three on three basketball competition, there's a dodgeball tournament at one point, they do soccer shootouts, and I believe in the mornings it is used for pickleball. On the pool deck area, you do have Splash Away Bay, which is the kids' water playground area, and it's really, really nice. It is, it's awesome for kids. They have their own little pool area, they have a splash pad area and all the slides. There are two hot tubs, so that's good too if kids want to go in the hot tub. And there's a different section over there, and that's for littler kids. Um, if you have little ones, I think you're spending a lot of time over here. Over by the kids' pool, there is another pool bar. Kind of with an orange motif. One thing I like that they do is they have these big water coolers kind of set out. That way if a guest wants water, it doesn't have to bother the bartender for it. So the people waiting for alcoholic beverages get their drinks faster. And the people that want water can also get that faster. So it's really good guest service. It's a win-win. Molly, we're currently in a section of the ship I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. This is the adults only area known as the solarium. 18 and up. Yep. Lots of comfortable chairs. Love these swings. You've got big, giant hot tubs that go over the side of the ship. They're massive, massive hot tubs. Great for sea days. Yeah. And then you do have a big adults-only pool as well. Spent a couple hours in there yesterday, enjoying the cocktails. And sometimes on Royal Caribbean ships, there can be a lot, a lot of kids. On our sailing, really not too many. Now the pool is kind of deep. Yeah, it's almost seven feet deep. You get these two, two cans. And they do have benches. So yeah, bar stools in the water. Mm -hmm. And of course, the adults only pool has to have its own bar. In the adults only area, there's also these really, really cool tile mosaics. I love how it has a toucan theme. Yeah. In the pool deck area, they do have these mats in the middle as the floors can get pretty slippery when there's uh, you know water getting spoffed over them. So I like that they have the kind of the non-slip mats. There's been many times that I've been walking on pool decks and I've almost slept. On the pool deck, you have a cruise ship tradition, the soft serve ice cream machine. It is absolutely delicious. On the pool deck, you will find a towel station. You do have to check out your towels. You swipe your room key to check them out. You give them back and then swap your room key. Make sure you give them back so you don't get charged. On deck 14, all the way in the front of the ship, you will find Liberty Dunes, which is a very, very nice nine hole miniature golf course. Now this is included with the cost of your cruise. It's very colorful. It's very nautical. I really, really like this miniature golf course. Uh, unfortunately, Molly did win by one stroke. Oh, that doesn't happen much. Now, also up here is a lot of sun loungers, and it's a pretty quiet area for sun loungers as well. On deck five, you'll find what is the heart and soul of the Liberty of the Seas, and that is the Royal Promenade area. 
Now we're going to take a walk through from the back of the ship to the front of the ship. A very easy way to remember, theater is in the front, dining rooms are in the back. Uh, you do the R bar over here, which is kind of a lobby bar. Longest there, hours. Yeah, today it's open from like 9 a.m. till midnight. Mm -hmm. And that guy, I saw him early at about 10 or so in the morning. Um, this is also where you find shore excursions as well as guest services. The guest services line on this ship has not been very long, which no. is very good. Very nice. Uh, a lot of food on the promenade. A lot of uh, drinks in the promenade and a lot I of love shops. The statue. Yeah, a very uh, Spuds McKenzie like dog mm -hmm. in front of Next Cruise. And, but he's not the only dog. I also really like this guy over here who feels like a like kind of a Monopoly piece, which I think is really neat. Now, if you need to book a cruise while on a cruise, you can do that here at Next Cruise. There's a lot of shopping over here. This is where pretty much all the stores are going to be. And uh, this one is a clothing store called Get Out There. Swimsuits and beach gear and things like yep. that. Uh, there's going to be two upcharge food establishments over here on my right. The first is the Cupcake Cupboard, where you can pay for money and get some cupcakes. Looks good. It does. Uh, the second one is the Ice Cream Store. Now, if you've been on Royal Caribbean before, they used to have Ben & Jerry's on board. Ben & Jerry's is no longer on board. It's their own independent ice cream. And unfortunately, the prices went up from when it was the name brand. And it doesn't look as good. We haven't tried it. Yeah. We pay for it. But it just doesn't look as good. No. On the left is Cafe Promenade, which uh, I feel like the most popular place for coffee on board. Yes. A lot of like Starbucks style specialty coffees. There's also going to be sandwiches and desserts. Um, also, the only place I've seen on the ship that has Powerade. Yes. Now, if you're on the beverage package like Molly and I are, that Powerade comes in handy, and it's included in the package. More shopping over here. They do have different sales and stuff during the day. Uh, on the, the first day we came on board, there's actually a liquor sales booth, and they had a free liquor tasting for hours on the first day of the cruise. And over there on the left is the general store. That will be where you'll buy your duty-free liquor as well as cigarettes. And plenty of watches and stuff for sale. Here on the right, you can see the watch and jewelry store. I love this. This is something that's on every single Royal Promenade. The big fancy car, and you can't sit in it because teddy bears are sitting in it. It's a good photo. Yeah. I also really, really like over here on the right, that is Vintages, which is the wine bar. And on top of the really cool entrance to Vintages, that is a DJ booth. So if you're any sort of DJ party here on the promenade, they'd be playing from that location there. And I think that's really, really neat. Inside Vintages, they do have music, which does not happen on many Royal Caribbean ships. No, there's been a, uh, a classical guitar player in there. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the bears do change outfits, which just makes it even more adorable. Today is formal night, so they're all dressed up. Yeah, look at them. They also have cabins all throughout the Royal Promenade. Yes. We have stayed in one of those. You do hear a little bit of music. It's not too bad, though. But it's not too bad. Just make sure you close the curtains if you're getting yeah. changed. Because you can see directly in all uh -huh. these rooms. Uh, vintage is the wine bar on board. But they also have a full liquor bar. So if other bars on the ship are crowded, go to Vintages, it's probably not gonna be that bad because a lot of people think it is just wine. My favorite store on board is over here to the left. That is the Logo Souvenir Store. Uh, they did have the cruise ship ornament that we buy on every single cruise ship. So we got one of those. This stairway here will lead you down to the casino. On the right is going to be a perfume and cosmetics store. On the left, somewhere I really, really like on this ship, and that is going to be the Hoof and Claw, which is the pub on board, and it's a really well done pub. Um, in the evenings, there'll be a guitar guy that plays in here. On our sailing, he's very, very good. They have the best beer selection on the ship. Yes, they do. And uh, it's just a really, really nice area. I love the... Uh, Kind of the theming choice that they made in here. It's like an old pub. Yeah, like a, very much an English or Irish pub. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the port and shopping desk. Also, you see a couple of these bridges are on the promenade, and those are mostly used during the deck parties or the the promenade parties. Yeah, they do uh, don't usually have deck parties many. Yeah. Here at Royal, it's usually promenade party. So you have all the dancers up on the bridges. Yes. Tonight is their big 70s party, which they do pretty much, I think, on every single Royal Caribbean ship. Which I would love if they would move it up and do it yeah. in the 90s. Um, we're very lucky that we get to cruise a lot. And it's like, I hate seeing the same thing on every ship. 
and it's the same thing on every Royal Caribbean ship. On the left, there's going to be a fashion boutique. On the right, somewhere I have been to, we're filming this on day two of our cruise. I've already been to Sorrento's Pizza four times. Yes, yeah. Uh, pretty solid pizza, very small, thin crust pizza. There's also a bar over here. This bar never has anybody at it, so if you're here during a busy time, you could probably get a drink here pretty quick. And there we go, that is the Royal Promenade. On deck three in the middle of the ship, you'll find Studio B, which is a very interesting venue. It is the ice skating rink on board. Obviously right now you can see people, there's a free skate session where you just gotta sign up and you can put on the skates and the helmet and skate around. You do need long pants. Yes, so and so socks, pack, I believe. And socks, you have to pack those. Yeah, to be able to um, there's also, on two nights of our cruise, there's a big production show on the ice, a big ice skating show called Encore. And it was not my favorite ice show I've ever seen, but it was also not my least favorite ice show. It was kind of jumbled, like there was a Broadway section and a, a Japan section and a Las Vegas section. It was a, a, kind of fun to watch. Yes, yeah. uh, unfortunately they didn't let you film, but it was not my favorite ice show, but I think it's amazing that they can do ice shows on the sea. Yeah, while well, it's moving. On decks three and four, in the front of the ship, you'll find the Platinum Theater, which is a gigantic show venue. A giant, giant. Yeah, a big, beautiful theater. Um, on our three-night sailing, on night one, it wasn't used at all. There was nothing going on in this theater. On night two, it's their big Broadway production show of Saturday Night Fever, which is an hour and a half long, like the full kind of Broadway kind of feel for that. And tomorrow night, there is a guest entertainer, El Gaucho. And there's a comedian on the last night, too, late night. I do like there's a very large bar on the balcony of the theater. Also, look at some of these chairs. Those are interesting chairs. On deck four, you'll find Boleros, which is a really fun lounge. Um, in the evening, this is where they'll have a Latin band that is playing music. And it's also got a really, really nice cocktail menu. It's got a unique menu, lots of fruity and fun cocktails. I'm drinking the coconut mojito. I love the coconut mojito. Molly's got a hurricane and it's probably about 10 to 12 special drinks on there. It looks like the band is getting ready to play. I do really like the decor in the Boleros area. It's some really cool glass artwork. Up on the top of the ship on deck 14, you'll find Olive or Twist, which is the nightclub on board. So right now it's gonna be nice and quiet. We were in here last night having a really good time. They had a, uh, a silent disco in here before it became the regular nightclub. And it's not a disc if you haven't been to them before. You get headphones like these over here, and there's different channels, and different channels play different types of music. Yes, different and songs. And it was a better uh, silent disco than we have had. One of the best ones I've ever been to, I think. Yeah. But also, like, one of the channels was very much me. There was a good half an hour when it was essentially like all music from the, like, the When We Were Young music festival yes. that we went to. I, I don't like it whenever there's, a, you know, a Spanish channel and a pop channel yeah. and an oldies channel. Like, mix it up, and that's what they did. They mm -hmm. did a really good of a job of mixing up all the different types of music. Yep, it does become the nightclub later. Um, it's one of the quieter bars. If you get here when it opens around 4 p.m. or so, you'll get some really great views thanks to these big old windows. And especially if you're on a sea day, some of the views in this lounge are really, really great. Also on deck 14, right by the nightclub, is where you'll find the suite lounge on board. Now we can't take you in there because, well, we're staying in an interior cabin. Yeah, we're not a suite. We're next to suites. By the nightclub is also where you'll find the Diamond Crown Lounge, which if you have the, the enough status on Royal Caribbean cruise ships, you can go in there and get your own private area. I'm getting close. I think after this cruise, I'll be 14 nights away. And then I can actually show you what's in there. Above the nightclub on deck 15, you will find the Skylight Chapel. So if you are go, want to go to a, a religious service, I imagine there's probably also weddings up there. On deck three, right by the ice rink, you'll find On Air, which is another lounge. This one's primary purpose is karaoke. I love how they have a dedicated karaoke and it works very well down here. They have so many different TV screens that does lyrics. And some that shows the singer as well. Mm -hmm. I will say they also use this as a movie theater and I don't recommend coming down here for a movie because there's no big screen. They just show movies on these small TVs like that. So definitely come down here for karaoke. I would not come down here for a film. On decks three, four, and five in the back of the ship, you will find the main dining room. And it is a beautiful, beautiful main dining room. And we're gonna walk you through everything we have for dinner here on night two of our cruise. 
and we've been given the menu for tonight. It's a taste of Italy. There are six different starters, eight different main courses, some stuff you'll have to pay for, and then a few desserts as well. The dinner service begins with a bread course, and I really like the bread here because they have these soft cheese rolls, and those are wonderful. Tasty. Molly went simple for her appetizer with a Caesar salad. Now I got something I absolutely love. The beef carpaccio. <laughs> the main course is arrived. Molly got a very, very good looking chicken parmesan. And I went with an everyday entree. The New York steak with peppercorn sauce. I love any steak with peppercorn sauce, so I'm probably gonna enjoy this. The dessert course has been served. Molly got the lemon tart and, and, and I got the Italian hazelnut cake. <laughs> on deck four, you'll find the schooner bar, which I think is my favorite bar on board the ship. They've got a really nice specialty cocktail menu. I'm drinking my favorite drink on the ship, and that is the rum old fashioned. Molly has a dessert pear margarita, and this bar during the evening, this is your piano guy bar. Uh, we have a gentleman named Roll who's really good on the sailing. And in the late afternoons, this is also the trivia bar. On deck four, you do get the wraparound deck. Some comfy chairs out here. I believe there is shuffleboard down there as well. And uh, just get to see the ocean. Today we're uh, we're in port in Nassau, Bahamas. And holy cow, look at this yacht! That is a yacht. It's got its own helicopter, Molly. That is its own yacht, yep. Oh my goodness. Disney wishes over there, that's, that's pretty neat too. But look at this thing. Wow. Something I really enjoy with their wraparound deck here on deck four, if you go all the way towards the front, you're gonna get a flight of stairs. And those stairs will bring you up here to the helipad and the very, very front of the cruise ship. I love when ships do this and it's a great view for sailing in and out of a port or just like looking at Atlantis here in Nassau. Yeah. It's very windy though. It is. You can have your king of the... Nope, but whatever you do, <laughs> do not terribly crawl over those things. Don't pull over Nope. Do want to point out on our ceiling, there's about six or so shuffleboard courts. Everything has all the equipment in here, but there is one cornhole set up over here, sort of in the middle of the ship with the bags and everything. So if you want to play some cornhole, come down here to deck four. If you go all the way to the front of the ship on the promenade deck, you get to the Star Lounge, which is a very, very big lounge. It's a multi-purpose venue. In the evening, there'll be music in here. There'll also be game shows in here. Mm -hmm. In the morning and afternoon, this is the, the trivia location. I uh, just took the win at cartoon character trivia. Got 40 out of 41. Yeah, so that was, shame on you. <laughs> yeah, so I don't watch enough Adventure Time, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, a big lounge, comfy seats, and lots of stuff going on. On deck four in the middle of the ship, you will find the Casino Royale, obviously the casino on board the cruise ship. I do like the entrance over here with all the, the Hollywood stars on the murals. Uh, we were in the casino last night. It was very, very busy. Uh, it does get smoky in here as well. Yes, and that's why I like this section. It's not as smoky here. Yeah. Um, I would say the, the casino is a little claustrophobic a, little, a bit. Yeah. It's, uh, they pack as many machines in here as they possibly can. And it's very, very tight. You did have those table games when we walked in. There's also going to be more table games over there. Uh, Molly, what table games are offered here on the Liberty of the Seas? We have Blackjack, Three Card Poker, Roulette, Ultimate Texas Hold'em, and Craps. Yep, and pretty much all the slot machines you could possibly imagine. Over here, you will find my favorite machines are... I, I'm not a big gambler. I do like playing video poker and video blackjack, which is going to be at these machines over here. Uh, their minimums on video blackjack, though, pretty high. It's $5 minimum on Video Blackjack, which is higher than pretty much any other cruise I've seen. Yeah, usually it's 25 cents. Yeah, Video Blackjack is normally a dollar. A dollar. On most yeah. cruise ships. And they do have some more interesting games like this one here where you can play the coin pusher game. The odds on games like this, not very good. But if you're a gambler, there are plenty of machines here in the casino for it's you. A big, big casino. Yeah. But Almost it was like busy. Very busy. A couple more things to note in the casino area. These stairs that change color, that'll take you up to the promenade deck. 
There is a bar in here, of course. There's also going to be some TVs in the casino area. Uh, the Liberty of the Seas is not a great ship if you need to watch sports. And this is going to be one of the few spots where you can watch sports. Like F1's on right now, so some of my buddies in the loop would be very happy. Located in the front of the ship on decks 11 and 12 is where you'll find the Vitality at Sea Spa and Fitness Center. Now the spa will be located up on deck 12, and me and Molly were really not spa people, but we did take the spa tour, which is on the first day of your sailing, to check things out and get a look around. This yellow room, this is the relaxation room where you would hang out before you start any of your treatments or any of your massages, and the chairs are pretty solid. Now they do have plenty of rooms for a, a single massage or a couple's massage, as well as all of your treatments. This is also where you would locate the salon on board. So if you want to get your hair all done up for former night or a manicure or pedicure, that's where you would get it done. Also, if you go down one deck to deck 11, that's where the gym is. A big room there for fitness classes. And the gym I thought was a pretty good size on this cruise ship. When you first get in, you get that area for classes. Then you get a whole bunch of machines for weightlifting and uh, lots and lots of stuff. There is some free weights in there as well, but not too, too many. And then if you get past those, that's where you'll find your elliptical and cardio machines. I do love those treadmills they have right on the edge where you're kind of running and overlooking the water. Also, one thing that's really neat on this ship, the sauna and steam rooms are included with the cost of your cruise, and they are located in the changing room area. On deck 11 in the back of the ship is where you'll find the Windjammer Buffet, open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We're going to show you what dinner looks like tonight on our final night of our voyage. As soon as you enter the buffet, you're greeted with a very large bar, the Plaza Bar, which is open whenever the buffet is open. This is also where two of your specialty dining restaurants are going to be. On the right side, you'll find Chop's Grill, the upcharge steakhouse area, which is about $50 a person. We've eaten there before. It's very, very good. Great also, there's sides there, too. Yeah, the, the, the tater tot kind of thing yeah. with Gruyere cheese. This is also where you find Giovanni's Table, the upcharge Italian restaurant. And one thing I do like is the buffet gets very, very busy at breakfast time, and they open up Giovanni's table for extra seating. There are two different soups for dinner. Tonight it is lentil and Caribbean beef pepper pot. Here's a variety of bread, some breadsticks. That's a very interesting bread. I'm not sure which one that is. And then I love these, the soft cheese roll over there. Those are wonderful. And let's take a look at what is for dinner. We got rice and beans. Oxtail stew. This is very interesting here that he's currently refreshing. That is artichoke crepes. That's an item I don't think I've ever seen on a buffet before. No, definitely not. There's a jerk pork, vegetables, vegan couscous, and a Caribbean braised cabbage. More dinner. We've got boiled yuca and sweet potatoes. The jerk chicken. It is Caribbean night here on the buffet as well as some fried dumplings. There is a fried fish dish, an interesting looking pasta dish, and then a baked potato dish. There's a pork wrap and a chicken wrap, as well as Jamaican beef patty and Jamaican chicken patties, and then a blueberry crumble. Oh, gotta love this. They've got a chocolate fountain. That is fun. And you can't have a buffet without dessert, so they've got carrot cake, they've got royal chocolate cake, Caribbean toto, I have no idea what that is. Ooh, rum fruit cake, and then a sweet potato pie. Very interesting desserts tonight. Very interesting carving station. There is lamb leg, that looks really good. And then some jerk chicken. Can never go wrong with mashed potatoes and gravy, and then some various vegetables. Now, if you go to the main dining room, there's going to be some items that will repeat up here on the dinner buffet, like pineapple sunshine cake and the vegan fudge brownies are both on the main dinner menu. And then cookies and jello. This section of the buffet is pretty much the same every single lunch or dinner. You got the burgers and hot dogs. My personal favorite that Molly is grabbing for you there, the chicken tenders, they got a really good quality chicken tenders. There's also a mac and cheese, fries, and pasta. There's a variety of grilled vegetables, some freshly grilled steaks, and then there's a peppercorn sauce, some grilled banger sausages, and then grilled chicken breast. Some different kind of stuff here. Citrus olives, grilled mushrooms, grilled vegetables, bamboo shoot, grilled eggplants, and then a selection of breads and dips. 
This area has a variety of meats and cheeses. Some interesting cheeses too, like, ooh, pepper jack. Not my section of the buffet, but there is a build your own salad area. All types of toppings. I think I found the final area of the buffet. Some Caesar salads, some rice. The Kung Pao chicken looks really good. That looks really, really good. Pao Baji. And then you do get into a variety of Indian foods. And then look at the uh, Caribbean chicken salad. That's very interesting looking. They do have a couple different beverage stations in the buffet area, and then you pour all the drinks for you, and then you would just grab them off these trays. On deck 12 in the back of the ship is where you'll find Adventure Ocean, which is where all the kids clubs are on board, and also the arcade, and something all kids love, Reno. Yes. Welcome to you on in here. I do like the entrance, though. Reno does make sense. You no. Know. Um, so the kids clubs are over here, and a very, very large arcade that we're walking through now. This is one of the largest arcades I think I've seen on any cruise ship. Yes, it's giant. Yes, now all these games will cost money and uh, of varying levels. They don't seem too overpriced though. Like if you want to play Pac-Man, it's a dollar. Lots of stuff in here. Uh, I will let you know it is, um, they do have a lot of broken arcade games in here. So like it is one of the biggest arcades I've ever seen on a cruise ship. But at the same time, there's a larger than normal amount of games that don't work. Um, some of the games you would win tickets at, some of the games are just more video games, but it just, it keeps going and going and going. Uh, lots of really fun games as well. So if you, you have little ones, they're probably gonna wanna spend a bunch of time and money here at the arcade. And I, I don't blame them, this is uh, no, a, pretty fun. There's a lot of games. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and it's a smart placement too, being right next to the kids club. Yeah, Royal Caribbean definitely knows what they're doing there. Yeah. Now, if you did win any tickets, you would cash them in at this machine for um, any of these different types of prizes. We have the Explorers uh, from six to eight. Yep. And then the arcade keeps going. Um, lots and lots of games in here. Laymaster is really fun. It's a, a bowling kind of arcade game. They have a bunch of them, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever seen an arcade with like four lanes of Lane Master. And then here in the back of the arcade, you'll find the Voyager Club for kids 9 to 11. And Fuel, I believe that's for the next one up, like 12 and over, or like 12 to 15 or something mm -hmm. like that. Right by the arcade is also the living room, which is the oldest kids club on board. In this area, you'll also find the Aquanauts, which is the kids club for kids that are three to five. Very fun entrance. In this area, you'll also find Royal Babies and Tots, which I believe is an upcharge to leave your little, little, little ones in there. On deck four, right by the casino, you will find the Focus Photo Gallery. So if you took any pictures while on the cruise ship, this is where you would go to see them. You swipe your CPAS card and it'll be on these computers here. I like this area of the ship because, well, look at this fun photo up. That is a fun photo up. On deck four by the theater and the schooner bar, you'll find Sabor, which is going to be an upcharge Mexican restaurant. On our sailing, it's only open for dinner. I believe it's around $40 a person. This is one personally I have never tried before. Uh, look at the menu, the menu looks pretty good. It does. I'm not sure if it looks $40 per person good though. On deck 12, you'll find Johnny Rockets, an upcharge restaurant. It's, you know, just burgers and fries. And they make the waiter dance once an hour or so. On deck three, you will find the art gallery on board. And they have a bunch of events down here. You know, they'll have the art auction. They'll also have scavenger hunts, guess the weight, all that kind of stuff. I would encourage you to do your own research before buying art on a cruise ship. I don't know much about it, but I know that um, sometimes it's a deal, sometimes it is not. On deck 10, towards the back of the ship, actually really close to our cabin, I'm sure you'll find the card room on board. So if you want to play cards or board games with your friends, um, there does seem to be kind of like a, a, a wet bar set up in the back. So I imagine this could be used for private events as well. They have the daily puzzles here. Yeah, Friends nice chairs earlier. too. And if you do open some of these drawers, there are some games you could play like Monopoly or Checkers. Domino's cards, nice. 
on deck nine, towards the back of the ship, you'll find a very, very small library here. Do you like these chairs? Like those are, those are pretty comfy chairs. And they don't have a lot of books here in the library aboard the Liberty of the Seas. In fact, they only have 27. Well, they did. Now, the library's gonna have 28. Yes, we are gonna leave a copy, autographed by the author of Experience the Point, written by our own Andrew Hyde, a member of the channel. Back in, if you wanna learn all about Cedar Point back in 2007, come and check it out. Hey, enjoy, come find the book. Don't steal it. Take a picture, send it to us on social media. They're like my favorite tweets to get. We are currently on deck eight. And I will say, we're at the Royal Caribbean online area, but uh, they do big deck parties here on the promenade, and these see some very interesting chairs to kind of watch all the chaos unfold from. You don't get the best view because of the sculpture, Yeah, but, it's but it will still neat. be a very unique view, and especially if you don't want to be part of the hustle and bustle, Yeah. sometimes it can get very crowded down there. Now this is, um, you can pay to get on the internet here on all these computers, print things out. This is also going to be your Crown and Anchor Society questions desk, so if you have any questions about the loyalty program. Um, definitely an area which is a little bit outdated, I would say, on cruise ships. Like, this is probably much more important before everyone could buy the Wi-Fi package on their phones. But if, like, you break your phone, which does happen, like, it does. Nobody likes it to happen, but that it does. And then this would be somewhere where you could get in contact with everyone else. On deck five towards the front of the ship, you got something called the Connoisseur Club, which is kind of like a quiet space on the ship. Um, there is a small bar, it's not it's not open. It kind of looks like a library type space. Yeah, it definitely, I think, was originally a library. There is a TV in here, so I guess like maybe during sports, they'll put sports on in here? Maybe. And if you're looking for somewhere quiet to have a conversation, this is probably a good spot to do so. Or if you're looking to rent out some sort of private space here on the Liberty of the Seas, I'm assuming that's what this mostly is used for. Or if you can need to work. Yeah, it's true. Here is our cabin. We were in an interior cabin, 1675. Uh, I think it's a pretty good amount of room for an interior cabin. Yeah, but you don't have much space to get to the bed. You yeah, have you, to actually crawl into the bed. Yeah, you got, or jump jump on it. Yeah. Um, do you have a couch, which is very nice. Um, I think it's a very, very functional cabin. I do love how if you do have multiple people sleeping in here, uh, you can always turn, uh, have a curtain yep. to block out the bed from the couch. Um, big TV, bunch of TV channels, probably about 20 or 30 channels, like a mm -hmm. lot for a cruise ship. Lots of storage. Yeah, I think this cruise ship only does like three and four night cruises, so you're going to have plenty, plenty of room. Uh, tons of hangers, which is also very nice. Then obviously it can't be a cruise ship tour without showing off the bathroom, everyone's favorite part of the cruise ship experience. Obviously a, a smaller bathroom. I do like that there is the the doors here for the shower. There is only one shampoo slash shower gel kind of thing. And then it wouldn't be a cruise ship tour without showing off the terrifying toilet noise. And that will do it for our time on the Liberty of the Seas cruise ship. I had an absolute blast on this three-night cruise. Wonderful, wonderful time. Little bit of information about the cruise. We did spend $226 per person for the cabin. And that's, I think, was a pretty good deal for Royal Caribbean. So that's, I think we got a pretty good value there. Now, with any vacation, there's going to be parts you like more and parts you don't like as much. But we're going to be positive. We'll start with the good. And here's everything we really, really enjoyed on this sailing. Uh, one thing I found, the staff is very, very chill. Like, they provide great service, but they also, I felt like, they let their hair down a little bit more. They would talk to you like, like people. And just, like, hilarious moments. Sometimes when the ship wasn't as busy, like, the bartenders would just talk to you about anything. Uh, there was an uh, awkward karaoke where for some reason they did karaoke at like 2 p.m. on a sea day. Oh, no, on a port day. Yeah. So there was nobody there. No we one. heard noise coming from the karaoke bar. So we walked in there. No, but it was just two crew members singing Creed. Yep. They were enjoying it. Yep. Um, I really enjoyed all the music. There was a lot of different musicians. Um, there was... Uh, guitarists that didn't do any vocals, guitarists with vocals, piano, uh, the party band was really good, Caribbean band, uh, he, I think he loved his job, he would just wander around, he would be playing on the fourth floor, and he would take the stairs up to the fifth floor, and it still worked, the microphone, Yep. I really liked all the music. Yeah, that was really good, I also liked the chicken tenders in the buffet, I am a big fan of chicken tenders, and they had them for every lunch and dinner, which made me happy. Um, I also thought the water slides on the ship, they had really, really good water slides. Um, that one half pipe kind of slide, that is, I'm, I'm sad we didn't really have a sea day on this sailing, because the views you would have got going off that wave wall, that would have been awesome on a sea day. 
I, uh, sticking with the water theme, I really enjoyed the adults only pool. Mm -hmm. I love when ships have an adult only pool. And yes, it was a little deep. It was about seven foot deep. Um, but there was bar stools and it was just nice hanging out there. Yeah, our sailing did not have a lot of kids. We've been on some Royal Caribbean sailings where there's been tons and tons of kids. So that obviously would be more needed on different times. I had a great time at the Silent Disco, one of the best silent discos I've ever been to, where you get the headphones and everyone sings along to the music. And I'm just, they had really good tracks and they were playing a lot of, a lot of like my favorite music. So I was a big, big fan of that. I agree with the silent disco. I hate whenever um, the red channel is all Latin music and the green channel is all 60s and 70s music. I like a variety because I like both. So uh, they played um, all three types on both channels. So you yeah. have to flip back and forth to, depending on what you liked. I also enjoyed the beverage package uh, a lot. There's no limit on the Royal Caribbean beverage package. And uh, I think I had like 21 drinks one day. I was I was feeling it. Yeah. I was feeling I was feeling good. <laughs> you were, you were. I enjoyed uh, the ship handled crowds really, really well. Yeah. Even the buffet area, we didn't really have to wait long. Uh, a little bit at a dinner buffet, and depending on what you were looking for at the breakfast buffet. Uh, but overall, handled crowds very well. And like even with the bars, there was not really any bar lines at any time, mm -hmm. so you could get drinks pretty quickly. Um, something I know that was very important for you, the stateroom cabin was very cold. It was. Didn't have to use my fan at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, we also had one of the calmest sailings I've ever been on. There was, I, you really didn't feel the ship rocking or moving around at all. Very, very calm. That obviously varies tremendously day to day or sailing to sailing. They had two great foods. One, the breads. Yeah. The garlic spiral cheese rolls. In the, in the buffet and the cheese rolls in the main dining room amazing and then they had sorrentos oh boy sorrentos yeah the pizza place um this is another one much like the beverage package i really enjoyed i think i had like seven slices of pizza which are small they're small slices of pizza but i did have about seven and they had a pizza of the day that changed every day i like how there's not line like there is line for the pizza it moves, but it moves quick. really quick compared to other lines mm -hmm. Our sailing did stop at their private island, Perfect Day at Coco Cay, which I feel is a big value add to a Royal Caribbean vacation. It's by far my favorite of the private islands. Uh, this time we went to the new adults-only beach area, and that I thought was a lot of fun. I really, really like going to that private island. And a little bit, a couple of staff shout-outs here to people that uh, made an impact on our vacation. They were very, very friendly. Our stateroom attendant, Jalay, and Mark in the main dining room. Now, with the good... Unfortunately, do come the bad. And uh, there's a couple of things we didn't like as much on this cruise ship. And uh, one of them, whether I was at the buffet or in the main dining room, I never really felt the desserts were very good. No, I agree. Uh, they had uh, one type of cream puff, and that was my favorite dessert. Boston but, cream pie for you. But overall, it was just kind of meh. Yeah. Um, the ship could use like a quick food location by the pool. I know other ships will have like a burger restaurant by the pool or a, a Mexican restaurant by the pool. This ship really doesn't have anything. So if you want an off hours dining, your choices are really only uh, Cafe Promenade or Sorrento's. I definitely think the ship could use a dry dock, especially if there's no freestyle Coke machines. And yeah. I think that's the only, one of the only Royal ships we've ever been on without them. Yeah, and the ship does feel a little bit worn and a little bit dated in parts as well. Mm -hmm. So it could definitely use a, a sprucing up, like great, great bones on the ship, just, you know, uh, some of the carpeting's looking dated, some of the, the fixtures look dated. Um, and I would say if you're a big fan of sports, this is not a great ship. If you're going during like a big sports weekend, there's no sports bar. There's very few bars that even have TVs. Um, like you'll have get some in the casino and then some in like random places like the wine bar has one. But it is not a good ship if you want to watch sports. One thing that was not great is uh, they showed movies. They did show movies on the top deck, but they also showed movies in the karaoke bar. And we walked down there thinking there was going to be a giant screen and projector. Nope. It was just on very small TV. Yeah, like maybe, maybe a 30-inch TV playing a film. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. And they have that big, giant show theater sitting there doing nothing, which could be a beautiful movie theater. Nope, you're watching it on a TV. Yeah, the theater wasn't even used on day one. No, no. Um, one thing that was kind of annoying, too, a lot of the musicians would take the breaks at the same time. So you'd be at the guitar guy, he'll go on break, and then you walk down to the piano bar, and he's also on break, leaving you with, like, odd gaps in the entertainment lineup where, like, There'll be like a 20, 30 minutes where there's just nothing happening on the cruise Yeah, they ship. all started at the same time and ended at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, minor nitpick here, that casino is very claustrophobic, very cramped. And there's also no good way to walk through it. Like if you're trying to go from Boleros to the schooner bar and it's crowded, it's, it's not the easiest thing to maneuver your way through. 
All right, there we go. That'll do it for our time on the Liberty of the Seas cruise ship. I had a blast. I had so much fun on that three nights sailing. If you got any questions about the Liberty of the Seas, let me know in the comments section below. I read all the comments. I get back to all of them. And uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys didn't watch these videos, um, Molly and I couldn't go on these cruise ships as often as we do. And we're very incredibly lucky that we get to do that. So thank you very much. And thanks for watching.